Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's Tuesday night live if you're watching this live um, on my Principles of Good Health weekly series and at the moment I'm doing a series of talks on my lives around gut digestive related issues, common problems and giving some explanation, a bit of background about these things and my thoughts on root causes, how things originate and natural approaches that you can take to help overcome these problems. Now do bear in mind that sometimes you may need to go and seek some um, advice from your GP if you're worried about anything more serious but most of the time the information I'm giving you here it's all completely safe and natural, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, rule out uh, seeking other advice from your GP first of all. Uh, remember that all my Facebook Lives are on my YouTube channel, Saved As Videos, Patent Principles Natural Health. So do come and look out some of those on a variety of topics, not just, just to do with digestion and gut health. There's lots and lots and lots of different things on there as well. So tonight I thought I'd talk about this really common problem of heartburn and acid reflux. Um, did you know when I looked at this, just the sheer number of people that are taking either over-the-counter medications like Rennes and Gaviscon or on prescribed um, acid suppressant medications, those things that I know as PPIs, po proton pump inhibitors. Um, and I got a US stat, not a, not a British one, but a US stat, Today, in 2018, there were 58 million prescriptions for omeprazole alone in the US. Not the UK, but in the US. I know it's a much bigger, bigger population than the UK, but 58 million prescriptions just in 2018 gives you a bit of an indication of the size of the problem and medications that are being handed out either like I said, from doctors or over-the-counter medications to just try and manage this. Now, heartburn, you know, do you experience symptoms of a sort of burning sensation? That's what it typically feels like, this sort of burning sensation in your in your upper chest area. It can be rising up this area, the esophagus, up into your throat. Really creates a lot of discomfort for people. Um, it might also be a feeling of um, a sort of bitter or even an acidic taste in your mouth that's coming up into your throat and into your mouth but most people might just feel it here um sort of stomach area but a real sort of discomfort but it's this sort of like burning sensation that people often feel often feel um and very very common now you know is fast-paced stressful world and yes stress is a factor i'll go on to talk about very very common hence the number of prescriptions that are being handed out for it but, you know, medications, as we well know, don't come without their side effects. So if you're on a, anything that's going to lower stomach acid, the knock-on effects of that are to do with the fact that uh, what I'll explain here is that acid is needed for very, very good reasons. Yes, we need acid to digest our food, first and foremost. But when we start to lower stomach acid, it can in, in turn affect the absorption of certain nutrients. And the typical nutrients that it can affect is B12. We need good stomach acidity for the effective absorption of B12. And so pernicious anemia can be a long-term consequence of lowering uh, stomach acid and having low absorption and low levels of B12. It can be just to do with the diet, but it can be a side effect. Um, and therefore the, that can affect energy and nervous system problems. And the other side effect is to do with the absorption of minerals. So it may not be obvious first of all, but we need good stomach acidity to do what we call ionize our minerals. So to do with iron and magnesium, zinc and calcium, for example, we need good stomach acidity to absorb our minerals effectively. And therefore, if you read the back of a packet of something like omeprazole or the leaflet inside a packet of omeprazole it would say that you need to be careful of your bone density over if you're taking it for a long period of time and really these drugs are not designed to be used for long periods of time they're designed for if you're on high strength say pain relief that may cause a stomach ulcer if you take these things on a short period of time so they may prescribe them they're not really designed for long-term use but unfortunately they are being taken for long-term use. I've had a client who was on omeprazole for 30 years or something equivalent to omeprazole. They're not designed for that 
long-term use. Um, and from a digestion point of view, just the obvious from digestive symptoms, but things like SIBO, I've talked about that a couple of weeks ago, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, because lower stomach acid can make the whole digestive system really sluggish. It can allow bacteria to start to build up in the wrong place. It can affect your bowel motility. It can cause constipation. Um, it can allow pathogens to flourish because acidity is needed to kill pathogens. That's one of our first lines of defense, stomach acid, you know, to kill those pathogens that are passing through with our food. So you could get a buildup of pathogens that can lead to dysbiosis. So lots of reasons why um, we need stomach acid and the consequences of if we make stomach acid go too low. So initial question will be, well, I've got high stomach acid, surely I need to take some medication to lower stomach acid. Now, to me, this is one of the biggest myths out there. I believe this is something that is fundamentally wrong. Yes, there are a small number of people who have too much acid, but many, many times in my practice, I find that it's actually what is going on is that people don't have enough stomach acid. How on earth can that be? You know, that just doesn't make sense, do it? I spend a lot of time talking to clients, going through their digestive sy symptoms, asking them lots of questions, and then going through this detailed explanation. But in simple terms, if I can just explain to you <laughs> why it is that something that is perceived as being excess stomach acid very often, not always, is actually due to low stomach acid. So what happens is that the stomach needs to be highly acidic to digest our foods, particularly protein foods. Stomach acid is needed to start to break down, cleave apart those complex protein molecules, which then go on to be further digested further down into the small intestines. So stomach acid is needed for this really uh, important stage in the stomach. Yes, it also churns up the food in the stomach. And yes, that acidity um, of the contents leaving the stomach is needed to trigger the next phase of digestion. But let's go back to what's going on in the stomach, first of all, what we're talking about here is we need stomach acid for digestion. If you imagine you're eating protein foods, meat, fish, eggs, cheese, the denser the protein food, the more likely you are to get symptoms, but it's not just in this situation, not just the dense protein food, but you've got protein food, it arrives in the stomach, it needs a lot of stomach acidity. It sits there. It sits there needing that stomach acidity and it could be too low. And what happens is that food can start to ferment and the fermentation can create bloating and gas and other discomfort. But when the acid levels are too low, one thing that has been found is that the contents of the stomach, instead of moving downwards so that it can start to move into the small intestines, the contents can rise up in the stomach. So you've got a little bit of acidity there, not enough to really effectively digest your food. That can create discomfort, but the contents can start to rise up and it only takes a minuscule amount of acid to escape back into the esophagus, this tube that connects the throat down to the stomach. It's not that long, but it's not designed to be acidic. It's designed to be alkaline. So it only takes a tiny amount of acidity to pass back into the esophagus to create this discomfort, to create this burning sensation that makes it feel like you've got excess acid, but actually it might only be a tiny, tiny amount of acid that's been able to escape back into the esophagus. So actually what's going on in the stomach is not necessarily due to too much acid. As I said, many times I find uh, clients actually don't have enough stomach acid at all. And it starts to create fermentation, contents moving upwards, not southwards, not able to move downwards effectively, and this little bit of acid somehow being able to escape. There may be another factor which is to do with what we call this sphincter muscle that's at the bottom of the esophagus, the lower esophageal esophag sphincter. Um, LES that's at the bottom of the esophagus at the entrance to the stomach maybe this creates a little bit of weakness there but actually you need that stomach acid to cr help the stomach contents move south and to digest the food and I know if you go to a doctor they don't recognize uh, low stomach acid it isn't recognized 
in all my time of working with clients and those that have seen doctors or even gastroenterologists, and I'd love to know if there's gastroenterologists out there that recognize low stomach acid as a condition. But I do see this and I help clients increase acidity in their stomach. So what causes low stomach acid? And that's really what I want to focus on here now is low stomach acidity. What causes low stomach acidity? Well, as we get older, our stomach acidity levels naturally start to decline. Unfortunately, it is a consequence of getting older, but that doesn't actually mean we don't need it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're getting older, but the levels decline, but we still need that stomach acid. So as we get older, you know, I certainly from 60 onwards, but we start to see it from 40 onwards, we may start to notice that we start to get some problems. So Aging is a factor in this, but a big, big factor is to do with stress. And the reason for this is that when we're stressed individuals, stress, that fight or flight response, telling the body to be prepared for danger, to fight or flight. And what it does is it tells the body that non-essential functions are not important when we're stressed because going back to caveman times, the body's looking to fight or flight and run away from danger. So it's saying, well, we're not gonna be digesting food we're not going to be eating food when we're trying to run away from danger. So it starts to sort of not completely turn off, but it actually has an impact on the digestive function. So it starts to hinder digestive secretion, starting in the stomach. Well, actually starting with saliva, but starting in the stomach as well. It's going to hinder those in really important gastric secretions and that stomach acidity secretion. So rest and digest phase is when we should be eating. Called that for a reason. It's the parasympathetic. It's the opposite of when we're stressed, the sympathetic phase. And so the parasympathetic rest and digest, that's when we should be eating. Unfortunately, modern lifestyles means we're often really stressed when we're trying to digest food. So the first steps then when we're trying to address what could be low acidity, and it's something I would recommend you go through the process first of all before rushing to use Rennes and Gaviscon and things like that is to start to look at mindful eating. Mindful eating, what I mean by that is are you sitting at a table? Are you taking your time to eat your food? Are you chewing your food well? Are you eating small mouthfuls? Are you trying to prepare your body for the meal that's in front of you? Because the first phase, the real first phase of digestion is the sight and smell of food. That is, it triggers the vagus nerves. It sends a signal to the brain that then sends a signal to the stomach in nanoseconds to say, hey, food is on its way. We need to start preparing for that. We need to be starting the secretions, the digestive secretions, that gastric acid needs to be released into the stomach initially. So just that sight and smell is important. So sit at a table, don't have distractions, don't have the TV on, you know, don't be looking at food, just prepare yourself. Look at the food, smell the food. You know, this sounds ultra simple, but it is that first stage of digestion. And when you start eating, eat slowly, chew your food well, you know, don't load the food on. And as I used to say to my daughters when they're little, you know, your stomach doesn't have teeth. It's not going to be able to start to digest food once it's in the stomach if you haven't prepared for it. Because saliva also helps to send messages and send the signals to tell the stomach that more food is coming. Coming, And when the food is uh, hits the walls of the stomach, then that also helps to trigger messages to say, yeah, we need more stomach acid. So if we eat really quickly, you know, those messages are not getting there um, in sufficient time and we can overburden the stomach too quickly. Now, if we're really stressed, yes, there's very limit, limited amounts we can do to take away the stress in our lives, but we can try and take steps to try and switch ourselves from that stress response into the, uh, as I said, this parasympathetic, to try and calm the body down. And the, first, the, the real simplistic thing that you can do when you're about to eat food is to do some deep breathing. Just try and do some deep abdominal breathing, slowly breathing into the abdomen, slowly breathing out and repeat that several times. Because this deep breathing 
is going to try and switch ourselves from the sympathetic into the parasympathetic. So it's just trying to calm the body down and switch the body into that rest and digest phase, preparing the body for when food should come. Now, if you've got small children, that's really difficult. I do understand it's not easy. You know, you've got distractions and small children, but just try and do those steps I take. Chew your food well, try and do some deep breathing, you know, sitting at a table trying to calm everything down as much as you possibly can. So mindful eating is the first stage in this. The next thing to think about is bitter foods. You know, other cultures will start a meal or they'll eat bitter foods alongside their main meal. So things like chicory and... Uh, radishes and rocket they're bitter foods and bitter foods stimulate digestive secretions so there's very good reasons why in other cultures they will eat bitter foods when they are eating a meal for that very reason so think about having a, some bitter foods alongside what you're eating because that in itself can be very very helpful now how can we help the acidity in the stomach if it's potentially a little bit on the low side a very very simple thing you can do is using lemon juice or apple cider vinegar and very often clients are thinking about doing this or they've read about doing this but they're actually getting the ratios wrong and they're over diluting it and what i recommend you can try to do which is very safe um and just starting going slow, low and slow is taking a teaspoon of lemon juice or a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in one teaspoon of water. It's always an equal ratio when you do this and you drink that just before you start eating. It's very gently helps to acidify the stomach. Start with that, providing you don't get any adverse reactions from that. You can slowly start to increase that. You could go to two teaspoons. Sometimes I'll say to clients, they may end up with a dessert spoon of each lemon juice with water or apple cider vinegar with water. Now, if you get a burning sensation in your stomach and the stomach is really high up here, if you get a burning sensation, it may be a sign that the gastric stomach lining is a little bit delicate and needs some support. That doesn't mean you need less acid because the acid is what you need to digest the food, but there are other herbal remedies that can help to soothe, coat and heal the stomach lining. That in itself is another topic for another day. If you've got questions about that, then do ask me, put comments in here and I'm happily give you some suggestions for that. But what I'm saying is the burning sensation is not necessarily a sign that stomach acid levels are too high. It can be a sign that the stomach lining actually needs a little bit of support before you start to add more acidity into the stomach. When I work with clients, I actually work with stronger supplements, but I wouldn't recommend you do that on your own without seeking professional help and advice to do that. Um, don't over dilute um, your, your stomach. And what I mean by that is um, don't drink gallons of water with a meal. You should drink some water because we do need that to help digestion but you know a glass 200 milliliter glass of water is sufficient which you should sit alongside uh, your meal so it's not the time to get to your meals and think oh my god I've not done my hydration today I need to be drinking loads and loads of water no you know you should be sipping your water throughout the day and continue to sip a small glass of water with your meal to aid digestion but it's not the time to then start having half a litre half a litre bottle of water alongside your meal, you may be overly diluting your saliva and your, um, your stomach acid. So just be aware of that. Um, right, next steps. Um, stress, I've talked a little bit about, no, we'll come back to stress, trigger foods. Now do have a little think about, you know, your trigger foods. Obviously, if, you, if you're concerned about over acidity and that's more of a cause, it could be alcohol, caffeine, spices. Sometimes we may need to be a little bit wary of those if you're getting a burning sensation and discomfort 
that is linked to this sort of heartburn feeling. Um, beyond that, you may want to keep a food reaction diary. So just seeing if it's, if it's random, if it's very intermittent, stop and pause and write down what you've eaten when these symptoms occur and see if it's recurrent. You know, it's very easy to say this, but it's another thing to actually stop and pause and write these things down in a little journal, in a little book that you can reflect on to see if there's a common cause. You know, maybe gluten. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna pick on gluten because I don't tell anybody to exclude things from the diet unless they really need to. But let's just say gluten. You know, you might look back and go, oh gosh, you know, yeah, I've had a lot of wheat or a lot of bread and bread is a bit of a trigger. It could be the gluten, for example. Take it out of your diet does the symptom go away? It could be as simple as that. So think about a food reaction diary. Um, now, lifestyle, very important. Try not to eat too late at night. If you find your problems occurring in the evening, this may have be having an impact on lowering your stomach secretions because you could just be really, really tired. Um, and you could be eating too late and you could be eating close to bedtime. Some people start to get a problem in the night so try and eat well away from bed bedtime you know ideally at least three hours before you go to bed and i did as a minimum at least one hour give your body a, a you know a fighting chance to digest the food that you're putting there and if it's a problem that occurs at night time no matter what time you eat um then do think about raising the head of your bed with books or something so that you're slightly inclined because this inclined position can just help to keep the contents of your stomach going downwards and the, the acidity not able to rise up. So that could be a, just a helpful tip. That doesn't get to the underlying root cause, which is what I'm always trying to do, but it could be just to relieve uh, the symptoms that you're, you're, you're facing. And, oh, I'm running over time, stress. Do be aware of stress in your lives. Look at ways that you can alleviate stress. Easier said than done, I know. And doing the deep breathing techniques that I mentioned can be really, really helpful. If you genuinely think things are too acidic, then you could try in an, uh, in an immediate and urgent situation using bicarbonate of soda in water. I don't recommend this on a daily basis because you'll need to get to the root cause of the problem. But you know, you could try a little bit, like quarter of a teaspoon in a small glass of water and drinking that. That bicarbonate can help alleviate the acidity in the stomach. Um, you know, sometimes the acidity can be too high. Have you got enough protein? As I said, protein is needed to, uh, um, as acid in the stomach is needed to digest protein in the stomach. Is there enough protein in the diet to mop up that acidity? You know, is your diet protein light? You may just need a little bit more protein there and that's why it's occurring. So if you've tried all these things and you're still getting symptoms, you know, you, you should go and have a chat with your doctor to rule out anything else, particularly if you're getting suddenly changing bowel habits. I, I don't want you to think there's nothing else going on, but equally, I don't want you to think there's anything serious going on. But, you know, understand your own body. Don't ignore symptoms that are occurring alongside anything like heartburn. Uh, and of course, if you've got chest pains, you know, and you don't think it's to do with a heartburn, you know, do go and have a chat with your doctor. But there are solutions out there if it is heartburn. And as I said, usually, in my experience, it's to do with low acidity, not excess acidity that's causing the problem. At any time, if you want to have a chat with me, no obligation to find out about more how I may be able to help you, then please do get in touch, message me, um, you know, keep it private and message me and very happy always to have and I always recommend a no obligation chat with people. So I hope you found that helpful tonight. Any comments, would love some feedback. If there's anything else you'd like me to talk about, then let me know. I'm here practically every Tuesday at six o'clock to share some advice with you, which I hope you find helpful. Uh, have a lovely evening. It's actually sunny tonight. Wow. Enjoy it. Get out there and enjoy the sunshine for the rest of the evening. And I hope you have a great week ahead. I'll be back next Tuesday. I think that's the 31st of August. I'll be back next Tuesday um, and see. hopefully see you then. Bye.